Hello, it's Nat here and uh, I'm having an absolutely crazy day today as you can see with all the tabs open here. I've just released my uh, complete guide to GarageBand which is now available and I've got two new students straight away. So thank you so much for that, that is fantastic. But uh, I noticed when I was on Cora, someone's asked me a question here. They're getting sick of the standard virtual instruments in GarageBand and they're wondering should they up upgrade to Logic or Ableton Live? Uh, well, I've got something great just for you. Um, you can get free virtual instruments and there are some really good ones. Um, there are quite a few lists. Just type in free software instruments and it has to be audio units to work in GarageBand. Um, so I type that into Google and I've come across this one before. I use heaps of these free instruments. They're fantastic. I'm going to try one I've never tried before. You just have to make sure that there's a Mac installer um, and that it supports audio units. Um, sometimes, see there's a little audio unit um, icon there, VST and audio unit. Um, so what you need to do is download the installer and run it. And basically um, one little problem you might come up against is that um, the Mac uh, might block it because it's from a third party developer and not Mac. So you need to go into your security and privacy settings under your system preferences and um, under the security and privacy. So I was just trying to run the installer for this particular virtual instrument and it was blocked. So I clicked open anyway and um, and then I was able to run that. I've installed it. Now you have to restart GarageBand. So I'm going to quit. Um, you have to restart GarageBand every time you install a new plugin because it scans for the plugins at the start. So let me go for a new session and select an empty project. I'm just going to fire up a virtual instrument, software instrument rather, same thing. And okay, so it's given me the default loadout and we want to have the smart controls open. So if you're not familiar with the smart controls right here, is a little icon that we click on to open and close the smart controls. And then under there's track and master down here, we want to have track selected. And I'm going to click this little uh, arrow to expand the plugins folder. Right here where it says, I'm gonna expand this so I can see that a bit better. Vintage electric piano, that's the default uh, virtual instrument they give you. If you hover over that on the right hand side, you'll see these two arrows, click and hold. And then under AU, Audio Unit Instruments, we should have um, the instrument that I just installed. Uh, it's called Dext. So there it is there. So they list them under the name of the uh, creators. So I've never used this one before. Let's fire this up. So this is apparently a emulator of the old Yamaha DX7, which is awesome. Um, let's have a little listen. So there you go. You've, th there are literally hundreds of free virtual instruments out there. Some of them have, uh, like in the case of UHE, he's got the Zebra 2, which is his commercial synth. Um, but then he has a cut down version called the Zebra Let, which is totally free. So I'll leave a link uh, where you can find all these in the description. I'll also leave a link to my brand new garage band course. If you want to support me, enroll in the course and uh, you will learn everything you need to know to get a massive head start in music production using this free software. Um, so finally, uh, with this, uh, you go up the top here and um, there should be some uh, presets kicking around here somewhere. Most, oh, here we are. Here's the presets down here. So mo uh, most synths come with a bunch of presets. Um, if you want to learn sound design, you should learn how to create your own. This looks like pretty complicated. Looks like these are a bunch of oscillators or something. Um, so we can then just, they, they've given us some ones to start off with. So there's a saw, let's try this one. Super cool. What else we got here? Wobble. So yeah, that's that old Yamaha sound. That's fantastic. So I hope uh, you have fun. You don't need to upgrade um, unless you really want to do move up to Ableton Live or Logic Pro. They are both fantastic professional digital audio workstations. But if your only frustration is simply wanting to get some extra sounds 
um, other than the default instruments that come with um, GarageBand, then uh, download a few free software instruments and give them a go. Flick through the presets, and then once you've found one that you like, start mucking around with all the different settings. You don't have to know what everything does, just use your ears. Um, and so for example, with this one, let's try this one. Oh, that's a rumble, let's try something else. Just use your ears. I'll, I'll find one that's uh, melodic. Okay, so see here, the waveform down here is a sine wave. You can choose triangle. That changes the timbre of it. You can muck around with the delay, the effects, and um, all these modulators and everything. Just just start uh, dialing up and down some of these uh, different... You don't have to know what they all do. Just start playing around with them. See how it changes the sound. Then when you come across a sound that you really, really like... That's your own unique sound. You just go up the top here and go save as, and then you save your very own. Um, it'll save the presets here under this instrument. You can call it whatever you want. Then you can dial up your own special presets. So that's how you use third-party software instruments in GarageBand. Um, shoot us a like and a subscribe. And if you have any requests for videos, um, pop them in the comments, and I will endeavor to help you out. Thank you.